spirit, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I want you to let loose your spirit man before him in worship. So truth can flow in your, your direction. In Jesus. No throne without the cross. There's no sacrifice without your blood. All this you did for me. No me without you. No throne without the cross. There's no sacrifice without your blood. All this you did for me. No me without you. Come on. No throne without the cross. Let's go. There's no sacrifice without your blood. All this you did. All this you did. worship my light has come to walk in the sevenfold blessings of redemption and so it is for you today this is word of God abundant assembly This book called the Bible is largely taken up with three words. And when these three words find expression in your life, you are done. Uh, each time you come here, I would like you to just close the door of any other person but you and God alone here. This is not a social garden. It's a, it's a mountain of encounters. When I come here, I come to see Jesus. This shall be to a, a service to be much remembered. Amen. This book called the Bible is largely taken up 
with three words. One, thanksgiving. Praise and bless. These three words. So if these three words takes up your life, you are done. Thanksgiving, praise and bless. Psalm 34 verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. All I do is to fill up my life with thanksgiving, praise, and bless. Because that's what that book is made up of. Just live here today and cultivate the attitude of having these three words in your life. <laughs> these three words will always triumph in trials. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. That's how I walk freely, sir. I travel light. Because I'm lighted. I don't carry luggage. Light. These three words will always triumph in trials. Thanksgiving. Praise and bless. We were out in evangelism yesterday. Somebody told me that there's a little boy that uh, when he goes back home, he, he begins to imitate me. He carries something in his hand, then he begins to hit him. This is a learning center, even children. These three words. Always triumph in trials. Thanksgiving. Praise. And bless. Sit down. He said in Genesis chapter 49, verse 22, Joseph is a fruitful bow. Even a fruitful bow by a well whose branches run over the world. The archer's house solely grieved him and shot at him and hated him. But his bow are bold in strength. By the hand of the mighty God of Jacob, the stone of, from the tenses the shepherd, the stone of Israel, even by the Father who shall help thee and the Almighty who shall bless thee. Bless him. With blessings of heaven above. Blessings of the deep that lie under. Blessings of the breast and of the womb. The blessings of thy father had prevailed above the blessings of thy progenitors unto the utmost one of the everlasting he. They shall be upon the head of Joseph. Upon the crown of head of him that was separated from his father. So the word bless. Let it take up in your life. Bless yourself. Bless your children. Bless. And when they press you, what comes out of Bless. You are living up to the pages of scriptures. When you are giving thanks, you are living up to the pages of scriptures. When you are a praiser, you are living up to the pages of scriptures. Let not these three things be missing in your world, in your life and see if any trial will overcome you. These three words will always triumph over trials. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph. So, thanks be provokes triumph in trials. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which 
always caused us to triumph in Christ Jesus and make it manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. Hallelujah. So it's one war that triumphs in trials. Thanksgiving. So when trials come away, instead of murmuring or complaining, say, thank you. Hallelujah. You have subdued it. You have broken the backbone of any trial Ooh. by the weapon of thanksgiving and praise. When somebody comes to you to intentionally offend you, you just say, thank you. This place is a learning center. With these three words in your life, you will dominate in all spheres of life. Amen. Thanksgiving. Praise. And blessing. Anything you bless has no choice but to bless you back in return. For what you are sowing, you reap. May these three words find expression in your life fully. Amen. All the days of your life. Amen. And then uh, the word came to us so powerfully today, sir, from the first charger. While he was teaching me, the Holy Ghost was taking me through scriptures to give me a summary of what we have eaten from his table. I told you, uh, just relax this morning. There's going to be a shower of blessings by the word of God. Just look at Jesus. At him. That's Psalm 34, verse 5. They looked unto him and were lighting, and their faces were not ashamed. You become like what you look at. What you look at the longest becomes the strongest in your life. What you look at the longest becomes the strongest in your life. What you look at the longest. It's not short term look. You say looking unto Jesus. So it's a continuous thing. What you look at the longest becomes the strongest in your life. All through my Christian adventures, sir, I've been looking through the pages of scripture. Day and night. So it's reflecting in my strength. <laughs> what you look at the longest becomes the strongest in your life. Some of you, you watch television the longest. Nekama, <laughs> you look at programs the longest. So it's that program that is reflecting in your life. Nekama ku sarika talika pakuta iga. Looking unto Jesus, looking non-stop. What you look at the longest becomes the strongest. So strong in her is what you are looking at. One of the primary assignments given to me, Stephen, is when anyone comes in here, I point to him at Jesus, to begin to look at Jesus. Give me my Bible. It's my Bible. I've been looking at Jesus. So I'm reflecting who he is. You become like what you look at. You are looking at your business going down. No. He opposes all things, even including your business. So you look at Jesus. The enemy wants you to just, no. No matter what he says, just keep looking at him. 
what you look at, the longest becomes the strongest in your life, in your business, in your children. I have been looking at Jesus and it's reflecting in my life is reflecting in the life of my children. It impacts on every aspect of your life. Sir. They just comport to what I am looking at, my children. So when you come to my house, you have peace. I'm sharing with you one vital key that came from the fourth charger. Because he said to me, a minister of the sanctuary, one of the troops of Babylon, which the Lord preached. Hallelujah. All the places I have been, sir, I didn't shift my gaze looking at any other thing other than. He opposed all things. And when he decorated me, people are just amazed. I don't struggle with what people are struggling for. I don't look at him. And he said to us everything. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. All that is within me. Three words that takes up that book. Thanksgiving. I'm blessed. Who forgiveth all the iniquities? Who he let all gazing, just gazing. What you look at the longest becomes the strongest. Your worth does not come from being compared to others. It's what you are looking at. <laughs> Someone else's success does not mean your failure. <laughs> no one is a threat. situation. No man. They looked onto him. I've never shifted my guest once. I tell you. What's a call? This is what is happening. It won't matter. The one I'm looking at will take care of it. Every shift is the device of the enemy. I mean, the look is When the spirit of blindness struck, I didn't look at the spirit of blindness. They looked at him and were lightened. That's why I'm still with you with new eyeballs at 62. This thing is so real. Now hear this. To, be, to claim that you are redeemed and you are not working the promotion of redemption is a contradiction. We are on a flight this morning to claim that you are born again. That's the redeemed. And you are not working in the provision of redemption. It's a contradiction. That you are not reflecting what is written. It's a contradiction. You know, 
natural events are pointers of spiritual happenings. This is why this fellow is standing here before you is conversant with natural events. Today, history is on the line. The finance of Wimbledon. A rematch of what happened last year between uh, Nova Djokovic and Carlos Alcaraz today. Natural events are pointers of spiritual happenings. Last year, Wimbledon, Carlos Alcaraz beat Nova Djokovic. And there's a rematch today. Whatever has defeated you last year, there shall be a rematch today. Amen. <laughs> In whatever area you have been defeated, today you overcome that sympathy. Whatever it is you have lost to your enemy, there shall be supernatural restoration today. Amen. Natural events are pointers of spiritual happening. We draw inspiration from what is happening. It's not accidental that you're here this morning. In whatever area you have suffered defeat, there's a rematch today. And I decree a restoration Amen. of whatever you have lost to the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. The women's final was yesterday between uh, Barbara Shivoka and uh, Jasmine Paulini. Barbara won. But you need to know from behind. Her 80 ranking is 32. But by her winning yesterday, she has broken into the top 10. I don't know where your position is, but you are going to the top. Amen. I'm tying natural events to spiritual realities. Financially, Amen. in your business, Amen. In every area of your life, Amen. you are going to the top. Amen. You live where you are today. You will see changes in your finances. Amen. Few people believe that she could make it because of her back injury and the illness that sidelined her to a winless season throughout January up to until yesterday, she didn't win any trophy. And then the one that came to her was the biggest trophy, Wimbledon. I don't know what you have been pursuing, sir. That nothing has come your way throughout this year. What is coming your way will make up for all the winless. Watch it. There's going to be a big take of all the Grand Slam, Australian Open, French Open, Wimbledon, and US Open. Wimbledon is the most prestigious. Throughout the season, she didn't have any trophy. But this one came, the big one. Whatever thing you have been pursuing that has missed your portion, today, the big one is coming your way. Amen. After this service, something is coming your way that will satisfy you throughout this year. Amen. The grandest blessing from heaven shall locate you this week. Amen. Jesus. Yeah. So, nobody believed that she could take him because of her back injury. Maybe there were certain things we are going through that uh, is negative. Even with that, God is going to turn it for your adventure. Yeah. Nobody. The illness that came her way, the back pain, nobody believed. The, the press man said she, it was a self-believing adventure. Nobody believe, only her. You don't need anyone's vote to win in the race of life. Only your vote count before God. With the disadvantages around her, they say this one can't make it. But herself believe. She kept winning every match, every match. So I will make it. All you need is your vote.
to win your race. Because it's before you and God. Second Chronicles chapter 27 verse 6. So, Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before his God. Your vote is the only thing that counts for you to win the race of life. So, Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before his God. You don't need, like my father would say, any other man's vote. So, the price for a great future is your preparation for it. The price for great future is your preparation for it. Your preparation for it. You need to see the long term preparation that this man has put for me to be standing here before you and for you to be here. Somebody came to my house and he said, one thing I observe about you is order. It's part of the preparation to become great. Even my library is in order. I have a compartment at the dining table where when you are feeding your body, you are also feeding your mind. The price for a great future is your preparation for it, nothing else. God wants to bless his children. Oh, many are not prepared. When you live here this morning, you will be ten times taller than what you are. Amen. There is nothing that comes away that you can't subdue. Your complaining must stop today. You are responsible for your situation. Preparation. It took me many years of preparation. When he delivered to me, I was just preparing myself. Prepared, sir. So, Jordan became might. I know what, what God is going to become. By the preparation I'm giving to it. Sir. That's why prepared people like you are so facing. You are not here accidental. Let me tell you something. Your economic security does not lie in your job. It lies in your Power to produce. When this man talked about power, it just touched a sensitive area of my life. All these charges came to just touch what I want to deliver to you so you can become pregnant, begin to begin to deliver your product yourself. The redeemed life does not look outside for satisfaction. No. As the redeemed, you are independent of the environment for life, for satisfaction, and for joy. <laughs> Only ignorant believers run to the world for life, satisfaction, and joy. It's not from outside. Let me tell you, and let me take you inward. 
As a matter of fact, your presence is what gives your environment life joy. Your presence. When you step in the place, that's where they see life. No, we are has life, sir. For you. The redeem is independent of environment for satisfaction. Nothing satisfies outside. It's inside. John chapter 4 verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst. That means no satisfaction. What I'm trying to do this morning is to change your focus. I want you to, to refocus and begin to look inward. John chapter 4, verse 13. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall pass again. That means no satisfaction. But whosoever shall drink of the water that I shall give him, it shall be to him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. That's everlasting satisfaction comes from within. And she answered and said, Sir, give me this water that I thirst no more. Neither come I hither to draw. That's why I don't go outside to draw anything. <laughs> You'll be moving around again. Oh. Oh. I'm pointing to you where the answer is. Whenever you see the redeem appear in a place, that place will be lighted up until you come to that place that has no light. Be conscious that you are a mobile carrier of satisfaction, life, and joy. You. If you are not there, they won't experience it. <laughs> After this service, people will desire your presence. Amen. Because you carry what will quench every form of thirst. I stepped into one of my bosom friend's house. Believe you me, as soon as we just finished school, the man just made it. He did all the good things you think life he has in his house. But when I stepped in, he looked at me and said, There is something you have that I don't have. Say, you could see how miserable he is. I was just exuding life, satisfaction, joy, and life. I want to point to you where life is. That wherever you step into, you will ignite, and then there's a glow coming from you to others. John chapter 7, verse 37. In that day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, that means no satisfaction anywhere, let him come unto me. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. For this peck of the spirit, who did that have believed on me, should receive. Because the Holy Ghost was on the air. So he's talking about the Holy Ghost. So the indwelling Holy Spirit is the source of everlasting satisfaction, life, and joy. That's your greatest asset. And it's referred to as the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. That's what you need to walk in the seven four blessings of redemption. The spirit of wisdom and revelation is that living water that quenches all thirst and gives you everlasting satisfaction, joy unspeakable, full of glory. He is the author of it. I 
after this service, people will acknowledge that you are carrying God on your inside. Amen. Wherever you step in, you shall be a blessing to people. Amen. Today shall be a platform for you for a glorious ride in life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. No one can reach his destination until he sees where he's going. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Regan, no one can reach his destination until he sees where he's going. I will know life is a journey. Only those who see their destination arrive at it. See and the Holy Spirit is given to you principally to open your eyes to see your destination, sir. Or else you end up somewhere. <laughs> or else you end up somewhere. A man lost his sight and then he went for operation. In coming out of the operating theater, he found that uh, he had regained his sight but lost his memory. So, after another operation, he found out that he had gained his memory and lost his sight again. So, the surgeon said to him, concluded that, look, you have just a choice now. Either your memory or your sight. And the man said to his surgeon, I would rather see where I'm going down. Remember where I'm coming from. You can't reach your destination until you see where you are going. I would rather see where I am going than remember where I'm coming from. So where you are is not where you are going. Where you are going is far better than where you are now. That's why you need revelation. He was actually confirming Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 and 19. Remember you know the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold I will do a new thing. After this service, you begin to see new things about yourself. Amen. About your children. Amen. About your spouse. Amen. About your business. Amen. I am seeing new things. The Holy Ghost is showing me new things. It keeps renewing my mind. You can't be outdated when you are working with the Holy Spirit. They are new. You enjoy newness. So. I am always in my excited state at all times concerning everything. Me, you, everything is just new, sir. That's why there is no dull moment with this person if you are working with the Holy Spirit. Because he is essentially the spirit of joy, revelation. You are always joyful. A lighted believer creates joy unspeakable, full of glory realm where people are attracted to him. Attraction. He becomes an attraction to his world. And the word of God is that source. All that we have heard today from the first chart is just the summary I'm giving to you today. Stay 
deal with this book. It has all that can change and transform you to become an amazement to your world. It will change your looks, the face of your business, the face of your children. I mean, it just keeps adding to you, sir. That's what we are enjoying at Woga here. We point you to the source of everlasting satisfaction, joy, and life. You can't miss it. You become unbeatable in the rest of life. It's that same spirit that came upon Joseph. In Genesis chapter 41 verse 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh. And in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servant, Can we find such a one as this is a man in whom the spirit of God is? So it has not changed. Not the one that has substance outside. This personality I'm talking about this morning has made my Christian adventure to be productive, sir. I am living the reality of the pages of scriptures. Can we find such a man as this is so it can play in your life too? Wherever you are. By the spirit of God, sir. Chippo saying things that don't matter. Can we find such a man as this is a man in whom? Now, after this service, sir. Your status will change. Amen. In whatever area they have commonized you, God is going to add dignity to your life. Amen. Can we find such a man as this is? A man in whom the spirit of God is. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, for as much as God has shown thee all this. Now I mean, that spirit is there to show you things. The things you show me about myself and about you, how that you become ten times bigger, yes, sir. how that things will just fall in place for you. Woo! Sir, when I look at every area of my life, what I see is just peace. I'm just reflecting what I'm seeing, what I'm gazing at. What you look at the longest determines how strong you are in life. Now, let me tell you for everybody here. Every scripture weighs equally. There is no big and small instruction. The smallest instruction from that book has a purpose. Hear this. When you say, shout for joy, it has a purpose. Ah, if you look at it as more. Every instruction of scripture weighs equally. There is no big or small instruction. The smallest instruction has a purpose. So, let them shout. And when you shout, it has a purpose, sir. That's the mystery of that book. Anything he says, either small or big, has a purpose. The way he call it. Don't receive any casual. They say, go wash in the pool. He say, go wash in the pool. Is there no river where I'm coming from? The way he call it, it has a purpose. Don't allow any one person to say, uh, this is Old Testament. Yes, this is... No, they are robbing you of the purpose. Yeah. <laughs> this is word of God 
abundant assembly where we celebrate the smallest and bigness of the instruction of scriptures. They are all in the now. There is nothing like Old Testament or New Testament. They are, it's God's word. And now faith is it's faith that makes it to become now. <laughs> so when you are reading any instruction, the nowness is what that's why faith is a living force. It enlivens the written word. So that is why I don't be choosy. It is the Holy Ghost, which is the quickening spirit that quickens every word. So there is no outdated word. They are all latest. The word of God is the latest in every form. I'm going to give you the basic signs of the manifestation of the spirit in your life. And then the spiritual gift it dispenses. If you are looking for a satisfied person, you must have seen that before you. I am living inward, within. There is a fountain within you. The fountain of life. That dispenses joy, satisfaction to others, the Holy Spirit. I was going through a book, uh, I saw how some billionaires are gathering, having, a, having fun. I said, Billionaires Club. I said, This is script club. Woga is script club. Uh, we are actors, like you said it. We are actors. There is no any billionaire club that can match this club. No, World club. <laughs> and when I saw quite a number of them, they all, they all came with their girlfriends and separated from their wives. Yeah. Hey, someone said, yeah, 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 no, 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 celebrate what is not satisfying. It's fake. Fake, sir. The basic signs of the manifestation of this spirit of revelation. Watch it in your life. And then you go home. Can we find such a man as this is? A man in whom the spirit of God is. For as much as God has shown thee all this, there is no so discreet and wise as thou. That shall be over my house. According to the word, shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Genesis chapter 41, verse 37 downwards. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have said you over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his seat from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vessels of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck and made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they bowed before him, bowed the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. It has not changed. That same spirit can make you the same, make you experience the same thing that Joseph experienced. That's why I know where we guys are going. I know this product. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All it takes is not just be here Thursday, Sunday to be serviced with the word and then go and manifest with this spirit. It happened in the life of Daniel. Daniel chapter 5 verse 11. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the Holy God. That's how they describe the Holy Ghost on your ancestor. 
There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Light and understanding. No wisdom. Like the wisdom of the gods who are found in him. Whom thy father Nebuchadnezzar, I said thy father Nebuchadnezzar made master. It makes you master. You master things. Every form of slavery ends in your life. Amen. You know what people are outside are talking about our social media team? It's the spirit of excellence at work. You didn't come here accidentally. There's something God has put on your inside here to be a blessing to your world. That's why he said to me in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 3, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle who is the law, peace and not man. As you live here, the things that will be coming out of you, people will know that it's not you that is doing it. Amen. I tell you something, sir. God will take over every area of your life. Amen. You will begin to dominate effortlessly Amen. by this same spirit. Amen. For as much as an excellent spirit, knowledge and understanding, Interpreting of dreams, showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubt were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Betisha. Now let Daniel be called. They begin to call you on their own. They begin to break protocols because of your exploit. That's why you have it, sir. Now let Daniel be called. You are not knocking on any person's door. It's just the expression of redemption. At work in your life. You know what he said? That he has never begged any man for anything. Why? What you look at the longest becomes the strongest in your life. When Jesus becomes the strongest in your life, you won't look at any man, sir. Looking onto Jesus, the author and finisher. After this service, whoever you are looking up to, you stop looking at that person. Amen. What are the basic signs of the manifestation of the spirit of revelation, which is the Holy Ghost? Number one, you become bold and humble. The two go together. You can be bold at the same time Humble. You can be bold and at the same time humble. Acts chapter 4 verse 7. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Hey, yeah. You do last of the people who are men of Israel. If we this day be examined of the good deed done to the important man by what Mrs. Melo, be it known unto you all that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucify, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you who this is the stone that was set at not of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there any neither is there any salvation can be found in any person. But this same Jesus, praise the Lord, who is the chief cornerstone. And when they saw the boldness, can I hear some boldness? boldness? So when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you express what? Boldness. So wherever you find yourself in fear, uh -huh, you are not filled with the Holy Ghost. Because fear and pride are the result of the fall. The basic signs of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is boldness. Sir, if you like boldness, you won't step into your colorful destiny. It's the bold step that this man has taken that we are here today. When Situation looks contrary. You need the infilling of the Holy Spirit to make you bold. 
You are waiting for circumstances to fall in place before it is there. Ah, no. You are responsible for your actions, decisions, and the steps necessary to take you to where God has ordained for you. You are necessary. So you need the presence of this spirit. And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus, they marveled. People will begin to see marvelous things coming your way. Amen. You will begin to do things that will marvel your world. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, no more fear in your life. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Sir, I was bold when I was attacked by the spirit of blindness. We were in the service. They sent a memo to be read. The assistant pastor by my side gave, are giving because I couldn't see. But when I stepped, because I've already stopped God's word, nobody knew. And then he no sent it because I didn't tell him that this is what I can read. So they brought memo and for me to read. God's faithfulness will never fail in your life. Amen. He didn't know. So I just stood up to begin to preach. Then he bought memo to be read. And I couldn't read. While he was taking steps, coming, I said, Lord, up to you. Bones. As soon as he placed it, my eyes were open. Before the people. That was when I shared the testimony in the church. That this man couldn't see. The only person that knew that I couldn't see is Dr. Etuk, who is uh, an optician. Uh, how good. He gave me even a glass to be using, but he didn't use it. I saw the faithfulness of God. That's why today I can dare anything. I can hear anything. That was how that scripture played. The very present help in trouble. I saw it. So, see, when you see the end coming, sir, and you know, still stay, sir. Still stay. Faithfulness, I can tell you about God's faithfulness. Before the congregation, I read this thing. I didn't tell my family members. This testimony, I'll keep sharing it all the days of my life. Any person that comes to tell you that the days of miracles are over is a lie. I have seen and tested the power of God like we have been told. Let me tell you something about power. Your true financial independence is not having where to, it's having power to produce wealth. There are two different things. Having wealth and having power to produce wealth are two different things. Because somebody can give you three million dollars but you don't have power to produce wealth. You will finish it. But when you have power to produce wealth, you will keep producing it. It's wanting to have wealth. It's wanting to have power to produce wealth. That means you keep having it even when somebody takes from you. Yeah. The reason why you don't like it, you don't have power to produce That's why you don't follow the covenant. <laughs> you say, if this thing goes now, it's finished. No. But when you have the power to produce it, you keep giving it. <laughs> you keep Financial independence is not having money, it's having power to produce money. <laughs> you know, those who just they give lovelessly, they have power to produce. But those who don't have power, they hold to what they have. If I have power to produce this handkerchief, 
I will keep giving you two of us. But if I don't have power to produce it, I'll hold it. So you don't need things. You need power to produce things. When I was with my last dime, and then God said, so to this man, master's program. And he didn't have power just came to produce and then <laughs> there is no second thought. He said he gives seed to the sower. Stop eating what is supposed to be sown. He will that's part. Now, it's the seed that is power, not the fruit. <laughs> As long as you have the scissor, you keep seeing the fruit when you saw it. Bako ka ta saka bate kalus. Power to produce that seed. As long as you have seed that you saw, so you have power. He was telling us how the power we should be first. It, it, it produces. <laughs> I'm not careful as long as I can turn anything to a seed. And seed is not it is. Now listen to me carefully. I know how to turn everything to seed. And I go and sleep. Your economic security is not tied to your job. <laughs> it's tied to your power, to your own power to produce that job. My father left uh, Angorim. Getting of it. Why? Power to produce, needing to leave one place to another. And when he was leaving, getting of it, he left everything there. He went to Lagos. As long as you carry the power to produce, you just keep producing it, becoming bigger and bigger. And then Raju Wakapanom, Kinala, he left everything there. Just be a, just have the, your own power to produce. Even when somebody takes it from you, you just leave. As a dog, they came, they called. You, you like fighting what you, you shouldn't be fighting. Just have the power to put. They say, oh, they are taking you. They are still something you are crying. You are going to the poor. You are going to the police. You don't have power to produce. Thieves don't have power to produce. They are going to see you. Look at somebody. Mekulata sakalada sokutane yaga. And then, to fit a banana, ark. Remove it from there to anywhere. Power to produce. <laughs> you don't need money. You need power to produce money. So when somebody takes from you, you see, Jesus is the epitome of power to produce. That's why the accountant, who is his? Who is his? Accountant, keeping his money. Stealing, stealing, stealing. Steal. The money can't finish. Got the power to produce. With the power to produce. This is why, sir, in this place, listen to me. Nobody here shall be barren yeah. in any form. Take this word from me. What you have inside here is seed. Say the word of God is the seed that has power to produce. When I tell you I'm not choosy, anywhere you plant me, I bloom. Power to produce. Sir, all the places I've been have created heaven. If you tell me which place is better, I can tell you. 
power to produce. I got my first car in Sokoto, an unlikely place again. Unlikely people bless me because of the power to produce. That's why I'm not selective. Nikamatu Salabasi Guru Diagades. True financial independence is not having wealth, but having power to produce wealth. This one that you are selective. This place is better. That's not like that. Just there is power to create heaven wherever you are. That's the reason for God's word. <laughs> That's why right. when you have this power, you won't be going after any person through or false. Yes, sir. Hear this. My father got to Tulsa. He saw what was on ground. He said, it can happen anywhere. Power to produce. Paul. I release you into your war. Amen. Whatever good things your eyes have seen, you will produce it in your life. Amen. He saw or a robot university and now he, he has the order of robot university. No one not. You know what? This war will not be able to contain you and I. Amen. All eyes will be on you. Amen. Number two, basic sign for the manifestation of the spirit of God. When you see more of the fault of others than their good, you are not manifesting the spirit in your life. The inclination to see more wrong in others than what is right. It's a sure sign of dryness of spirit. These are basic signs for the manifestation of the spirit of God. Why? Jude 20. Beloved, building up yourself. Building up yourselves in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. So it builds, it doesn't tear down. So when you look and you begin to tear down others, other ministries, other churches, other believers, uh, that's dryness of spirit. Basic signs for the manifestation of what? The Spirit of God. Beloved, building up yourself. When you see people, you just, try, you just build them up. You like building people up. Not tearing down people. Check people in the body of Christ that tear down others. Ministries, church. That's the dryness of spirit. This one builds. Hallelujah. It rejoices. When others are getting blessed, yes, check your life. They see great army, even in the driest bones, like Ezekiel. Yes, so, when you see something, they see great army, even in the driest bones. So, you see. It's just positive all around. They see great army even in the driest bones. So no matter how dry you are when you come here, sir, what I see is great army. That's the manifestation 
of the Spirit of God. The mentality of God doing anything but only to us is a show of dryness of spirit. When you begin to think that any new move has to be through you, not others, that is dryness. Why? God can use any person. The mentality of uh, God is doing something. It has to be through me. You are empty of this. Yes, sir. We were sent to for the mission. The person we went together with is M1. M2. I was M1. But you see, when we got to that place, sir, the grace that was at work in him, he was receiving <laughs> blessing much more than me. He didn't touch me. God, God can you stand the person. This one that you are thinking is only you or not you. You are dry. But when you are rejoicing at the display of any other person, that's why they reject spiritual manifestation in others that they don't understand. So when you see somebody who is fighting spiritual manifestation, that he doesn't understand he's fighting it. Instead of rejoicing that this person is a blessing, I don't know. Oh, God can use any person. I want you to go with this understanding and you will find rest. All the days of your life. Stand to your feet. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, for the manifestation of the Spirit in the life of everyone here. Whatever thing you know that shall constitute a hindrance, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Begin to play out, Lord, in your fullness Amen. in the life of everyone standing Amen. here. Lord, let this week we are stepping into be a show <laughs> of your manifestation. Amen. Everyone standing here before me shall live after the order of Joseph. Amen. They shall take their war by storm Amen. after the order of Daniel. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Now you will live long to eat the fruit of your labor. Amen. No one shall step into where God has prepared for you this week. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, what are the spiritual gifts he dispenses? First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. For the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone to profit with her. For to one is given the word of wisdom, and to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gift of healing by the same Spirit. So how will you now begin to tell me that these things are not playing now? They are playing. It's just that you don't understand it. And it doesn't have to go through you. The mentality of if not, if not me, then nobody. And then you reject the spiritual manifestation in others because you don't understand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In this place, all the gifts shall play fully in our yeah. lives. Do you know there are some people standing here now that you have the gift of healing? Buried in your inside. That's why you are here to find expression of whatever thing God has put on your inside. That's why everybody is a, is a minister of this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To some, gift of faith, gift of healing. To others, the gift of miracles. You will see miracles in your finances. Amen. In every area of your life. Amen. You are living here as a miracle to your world. Amen. Jesus, there shall be instant transformation of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Put your hand on your chest. Father, I take authority over whatever thing is blocking the expression of the spirit in the life of everyone here. 
I decree, Lord, the unleashing of your grace to stir up every gift here. As your people go, Lord, they shall take their world by storm. Those gifts shall begin to pave way for them. This city shall open up for them in blessing. What is coming the way of everyone here today, Lord, shall change their status. It shall change their status. In the name of Jesus, go from here and enjoy supernatural grace that will command the attention of your world. In Jesus' mighty name. You are here this morning. You are not born again wherever you are. I would like you to put your hand on your chest and say these words after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I come to you today. Save me. I believe in my heart that you died for me and on the third day you rose from the dead. Come into my life and write my name in the book of life. I am born again. If you have said that prayer, whatever you want, pick up whatever you came with and rush to the altar. Can I hear you say, I have, I have power to produce. And the power to produce, self and the power to produce is in seed form. I won't eat my seed. Look at the way our father is just changing levels. You can't fight anyone who has power to produce. And bless you, God. He say he gives her seed. Now hear this. If you are asking God for anything, he won't give you the thing. He will give you the seed for the thing. If you like, eat it. That's how God operates. Or that's how we operate in this kingdom. So is the kingdom of God. I see the man should cast seed. Ah, so don't cast seed. Pray fast. You pray your life. Big time. Attack. Anything you see in any man, don't go and ask him to give you the thing. Tell him to give you seed. Like asking for things. When my father gave me a car in Abuja here, I was not happy. You like receiving things and you're happy. I agree. No. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Give that cedar. It's a cedar. A giver is a cedar. A receiver is one who receives fruit. If you see any good thing you like in any person, don't tell him to give it to you. Ask him, what did you do? That seed. <laughs> this is another service. My father got to Tulsa in the ministry in America. And then the man said, do you have needs? Say, said, this guy wants to. Oh, we don't have wood. I'm a cedar. I have power to produce. I have never put my eyes on anything that any person has. Then talk of jealousy or envy. Yeah, yeah, it's not lack of understanding. Let me say this before you go. God won't give you what you are asking for. He will give you seed for it. If you like so. While the art remained, seed. That's it. And then uh, Mark 4.26. So is the kingdom of God. You like doing not so. And you are in the kingdom of God. And you are fighting those who are doing so. <laughs> you won't change it. <laughs> so is the kingdom of God. I see the man should cast seed. I mean, oh, it's a seed thing. Can I hear? It's a seed thing. You like going for food when you are not holding seed and you are not saying seed. You can't go against the law, sir. I have some seed of how to tarry in God's presence. I saw the seed in my father. That's why I'm too sure. I don't go for fruit. I don't go for what person has seen. It's no. seed I'm looking for. This is a teaching center. We teach you how to live. So is the kingdom of God. I see the man should cast seed into the ground. So there is seed. The seed 
and then the ground is your heart that you must sow. No matter how fertile the ground is, it remains barren until the seed is sown. So the, the problem is not the ground, it's there. But the person is not sowing, and then he's crying, shouting, fasting. He says, So is the kingdom of God. I have sown seed the world study. Every area of my life that is bringing me, it's me that sows seed. No man can undo any person. That's why God is so smart. He gives it to everybody. Just waste your time talking against everybody. Yeah, we waste your time. They are just so easy, though, and they will be blooming in your face. Relax here. There is relaxation here, sir. This month shall be your best month. My, my God is going to perfect everything. So when you go to your work and you go there at 7 a.m., you are sowing seed. You live there before the time. You are not sowing seed. Everything is seed. The things you do, they are seeds. Somebody keeps something in your hand and then you, you are not sowing seed. Everything is about life is seed. Hallelujah. You go to work late. You handle your master's things somehow. You are not sowing seed. Jonah became great because he prepared his way before the How did he become great? What he was doing was right before God. Let me release you. Shall we share the goodness?